four years. Five. I would say five now. Yeah. Has it been five years? And uh, Forrest is a true off-road uh, guy. You like off-road, uh, and you are a motorhead. You would. Is that okay to say that? Perhaps. Uh, perhaps. You know as much about cars and automotive things as anyone I've ever known. <laughs> Okay, well, it's just really amazing what you've done. Would you mind showing us around and uh, let us see your rig? Let's take us inside? Take a look. Okay, let's go take a look, folks. So here's your just your standard Chevy 350 uh, 4L80E transmission, which is really common. And you can get in right in there and work on it, and anyone else in the world can work on it. Super easy to get to. And you got nice, big, pretty aggressive tires. 19.5s, load range G. So that must be have about 4,000 pounds each? 5,000. 5,000 pounds on each tire. That's also why I run singles in the rear instead of the factory duals. Right, because you can carry, let's see. 10K on the rear axle. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. But that was, this, is that a standard size tire with them? With what? With the Isuzu. 19.5s on the HD models. The regular models had 16s. Oh. And of course, no serious off-roader would not would go without a winch. So you've got a must be a big winch. 9500. 9500 isn't all that Slang. big, yeah. So what do you think you weigh now? 10? I've yet to scale it because we just put it together and I'm. No, I'm guessing upwards of 11.5. Okay. So this is your garage. And there is your motorcycle in your garage and your tools. And what are you carrying for motorcycle? Uh, it was a Suzuki V-Strom, but it's pretty highly modified. It's 82 pounds lighter than stock. So it's a big bike, but use it as an off-road. A kind Exploring. of an adventure bike. Yeah. That would be kind of how you would classify everything you're doing is adventure. Yeah, it gets a little overused these days, but it does get <laughs> that's what we're doing. Everyone throws it around. Very nice. Uh, pretty simple. You just ride, there's a long ramp, and you just ride the motorcycle out, and it's got flip down mirrors so it clears the box. But to load it up, there's a little tiny ATV winch through a snatch block on top that goes down to it and you just hit a button and it pulls it right up for you. Wow. And the other side opens up too if you want to use it for tools or whatever. It's nice to go to the hardware store. It's eight feet long so you can put full size lumber in there too. Right. Or if you're running dirt bikes and going to Baja or something, you can put two dirt bikes face to face in there as well. So you built the whole rig around the garage. Well, I started around that motorcycle, a right. tape measure to see what the size of the box was, to see what size of the frame and the tire. There's a six inch dropout for the front tire to make it clear without collapsing the suspension, and then built the camper around the dimensions of that. And then uh, we got some outside LED lights for evening. Um, didn't want the typical water filler plastic junk, so filler necks for boats are um, for gas, they're surface mount, so it's keyed and it's solid. So that's your water fill. Yeah. These stairs must be off of uh, the big campers, truck campers, no? Yep. They're extremely common and they finally really come down in price. I think you can get these for $150 nowadays delivered. Okay. And then I've used a uh, standard RV door so that you can have a normal screen door. Which would, uh, if you go enough, if you're out enough, you really know how important a uh, screen door is. Nice hardwood floor. Yeah, it's a waterproof line of Pergo. And it'll hold up to uh, hard use. And you're carrying a mountain bike. Got to have a mountain bike. And so you built uh, specifically for this 
to hold it. Yeah, there's a catcher down here, the back tire goes in and it, it's fit perfectly. So it can't wiggle around. And then this is a large storage box that doesn't use very often because it's actually for um, a paramotor wings. But I just got some stuff thrown in it currently. Mm -hmm. And then on the side are for shoes, which I haven't put any shoes in yet. Just moved in yesterday. So you just got moved in and you're heading out tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Like most things in life, it's kind of a last minute deal. Lots of last minute deals. And your shower is right here. Yeah, it's got four layers of epoxy and all the corners are filleted. So it's basically a inside out boat, completely waterproof. Made by a boat builder. So it's assume, I would assume safely that it's, uh, it's waterproof. It comes with a warranty. Yeah. <laughs> and a composting toilet. Little nature's head unit. Mm -hmm. Very, very gorgeous. The wood is gorgeous. The woodwork is gorgeous. Yeah, the mahogany was a, a bed frame that we took apart. It wasn't really? needed anymore. So we got lots of mahogany trim out of that. Wow, it's beautiful. Light. And so here, here's your cab over, your cab over the garage. Motorcycle is underneath here. It's a full size bed, 54 inches. And then on the, the extra length, went ahead and made a little cabinet that's just for smaller stuff. Um, you know, kind of your socks, underwear, t-shirt, storage. Kind of a catch-all. And then uh, there's power inside with USBs for phones. Reading lamps. And they're dimmable. And then if you're reading or watching a movie, you just kick your pillow up on that and have a little more angle to it. Mm-hmm. A little... TV in the corner with a DVD built in. For winter time, you got dark hours and need to kill some time. Right. Guitar built into the wall here. So when you, when you build the rig yourself, boy, that's a beautiful uh, ceiling too. All this ceiling is actually local. It was on the Uncompadre Plateau, which is only a few miles from my house, and it's milled locally. It's Aspen. Beautiful ceiling. Every, all the woodwork is just uh, is just gorgeous. And there's fantastic fans front and rear. Right. For That's ventilation. Really important. And the small window over my bed is double pane, so it helps in the winter. Big uh, storage unit here. It's actually water storage. Oh, that, that's your water. This entire tank is 70 gallons of fresh water. 70 gallons of fresh. Wow. So you don't have black because you're using a compost. Compost. And my gray water tank is only 10 gallons. It's very small. That's only for when I'm occasionally at somebody's house or in the parking lot and I need to do dishes that I just turn a valve and I can store up to a couple days of water without having to let it go but normally i'm out in the middle of nowhere where i can just let it go on the ground so and for the hot water i mean for the shower you must have a hot water heater i do uh next to the water tank there's actually the water pump is underneath of this panel mm -hmm. and this is a pantry i mean uh what do you call it for laundry it's just a laundry hamper shoe. hamper there you go and then the hot water heater is in this first bay is that an on-demand? It's on-demand, yep. It's a suburban on-demand. Propane? Yep, instant. And a fridge. So this must be a really, really, really fancy fridge. It's a $200 unit from Lowe's. Walmart, Target, they're all the same. They're just large apartment fridges. So we'll just, uh, and with 850 watts, you got plenty to power with. No problem. And yeah, uh, a little freezer yeah. unit. For that plenty of space. Bed. They're cheap. And one, they work great. Maybe. They're quiet. One breaks, you throw it away and get a new one. But usually you get five, six years out of them. Uh, sometimes you get remarkable service out of them. And then the rest of this is all storage. It's all, I'm slowly moving in, but it's all open. There's bins and bins and bins. You just pull them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and the standard uh, really a lot of counter space for a uh, for a kitchen nice big uh, sink and three burner stove and you brought in an oven absolutely <laughs> this is home for me it's not just a camper so you need to be able to cook food to live and that way you got a little oven plenty big enough for cooking Frenched everything in wherever I could to keep it simple. Knife, block, silverware, extremely simple. I don't have drawers, I have cubbies. And a good sized sink where you can actually put dishes in and do dishes. Right. Super important. Right, very, very nice. A little wave three for the heat. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of Olympian products and the wave three is one of the best. With the with the space this size, it should be just right, unless except for extreme temperatures. Well, I have two inches of solid core foam. Should be pretty well insulated. Very well insulated. Except for the number of windows I have, which is a my biggest drawback to insulation. But we just made some custom window coverings. They're pretty simple. The Reflectix. Found some fabric we liked, sewed them up, put magnets in the corners, and you just click them in. And we got lightning over us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the storm's rolling in. Yeah, that is really slick. And then they, they store back here. So you specifically wanted this place to store your window coverings. The window coverings are the largest item I have in the entire camper. So part of the design early on was where to put all said window coverings. So you don't use them a lot. So the counter is actually six inches short of the, the body of the vehicle for the window coverings. And over here is a uh, very nice dinette. And it doubles into another bed if you need. It just pops in and out of this cleat here and turns into another full size bed. Very, very nice. And there's electrical power everywhere. There's sockets hidden behind every spot for 110. And then down here is all USB chargers. There's four of them here. There's three of them up there. And I can't see a one of them. They're all hidden. And so you have extremely, extremely clean lines, but it's all right there, just hidden. Simplicity. You'll notice there's no cabinets. No cabinets. That stands out. How, how big the view is. You've got virtually a 360 degree view. And when you sit back here and read a book, you can see almost all the way around. Yeah. And a lot of people get the truck campers for this kind of thing, because you get one on a four-wheel drive truck, but they're so crowded feeling to me, because yeah, they've crammed everything into such a little space and it's all up top. You get one window. Right. And here you've got, man, just, well back here you have a 180 degree view. Wow, it's just so gorgeous. I mean, it really is just absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful work. And, and go your, anywhere. Truly go anywhere. And your view, when you stand up, you're nine feet off the ground. Yeah. At eye level. The top of the camper is ten feet, one inch at the solar panel. So your eyes are about nine feet here. Even if you park in the parking lot, you can't... The tops of the cars are all well below you. Well, Forrest, thank you so much for sharing your home with us. It's just amazing. Um, if you ever went and decided to go into business selling these things, I, I think you'd have uh, uh, lots of buyers. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, thanks so much for sharing your home with us. It's just really gorgeous. I, I'm in love with it. Folks, I hope you got something out of this and enjoyed it. Got some, some uh, lust going there for a beautiful rig. Got some thunder going and uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.